Hey there, Alex Kidman here. And I got asked by one of my viewers my thoughts about Australia's 3G network shutdown. So I thought I'd run through what's happening, why it's happening, and then my thoughts. Let's get into it. So I am going to run through some of the basics here, and I appreciate that some of you may absolutely know all of this stuff. Feel free to jump around to the sections that are relevant to you. I've time-coded all of this to try and make that easy. But I do figure that some of the confusion, some of the stress actually relates to people not understanding what's going on or why it's going on. So it's worthwhile going through those basic things. I'm not trying to be patronizing towards anyone. So if you do know this stuff, that's cool. Jump ahead if you're terribly confused or you want clarification, then watch the whole video. It's all good. Now, Australia's 3G networks are absolutely living on borrowed time. Or in fact, if you're a Vodafone customer, it's a thing of the past. Because all three of the local network carriers, that's Telstra and Optus and TPG slash Vodafone, have or will have completely shut down their 3G networks by the end of September 2024, which is closer than you think. Now, this isn't news, but I was asked by one of my viewers, specifically Jay Inglis 8214 presumably no relation to the Inglis that I went to school with, because he didn't have 8214 at the end of his surname, now that I think about it. But I was asked by them about my thoughts about the 3G shutdown, and this is a story that I have covered in some detail over many years now, working as a tech and telco journalist. So let's start with the absolute basics. When will 3G be shut down around Australia? And the answer to this question depends on the underlying network that you're using for your mobile or mobile broadband services. So TPG Vodafone, for example, were the first off the block to cut their 3G services. They started doing that as of December 2023 and finished it all by the end of January 2024. So they're gone. 3G is no longer a thing on the Vodafone network. Telstra had originally planned to shut down its own 3G network on the 30th of June 2024, but they actually later decided that they'd actually delay that a bit. Their 3G network will now cease transmission as of the 31st of August 2024. Optus has already started cutting some of its 3G network services, but will formally cut the cord as of the end of September 2024. So basically, by October 2024, there will be no 3G network service across Australia at all. The answer to this one is a pretty simple nope. Look, there are a lot of mobile brands out there. You might be a customer of, say, Amazim or Belong or Kogan Mobile or Oldie Mobile or Everyday Mobile or countless others, well not countless others, but there's a quite a lot of them. And they're what's known as mobile virtual network operators or MVNOs in the trade. And basically they're middlemen. They're selling access to those three networks. So that's still just Telstra, Vodafone, and mostly Optus. Uh, that's where you find most of the MVNO providers, but they're all just selling access to those networks. And if those networks don't have 3G, then neither do they. Now, on the surface, this might seem like a decent enough question. I mean, we've had 3G networks here in Australia over multiple decades, and if the system works and it ain't broke, why break it? The answer here is one of mobile network capacity and the wireless spectrum that each of the three networks have the legal rights to use. There's basically only so much spectrum to go around. Mobile network analogies nearly always devolve down to discussions about roads, but I'm going to remax that just slightly, and instead talk about, well, paths. Okay, it's not a radical reinvention, but work with me here. Imagine you've got a forest that people walk through, and they've worn down a path because they walk through it so much. So the path is muddy, there's probably a few ruts and rocks and things like that, but it's functional enough for slow walking. And that's all fine, it can last for a good long time, although... Maybe not that pleasant in bad weather with the mud and the bears and all. Then the bicycle gets invented and we can all zip through the forest much faster, avoiding the bears. 
except that the path is muddy and it's full of stones and everyone has to cycle through it really slowly to avoid crashing. The solution here is a better paved path using the latest brick technology to make a smoother surface that's faster and better in different conditions. That, minus perhaps the bears, is basically why Australia's 3G networks are being decommissioned. 3G is the muddy path in this scenario and the paved faster path is 4G and 5G. Essentially speaking, you can't put in the paved path through the forest without destroying the forest, which we don't want to do. You put it in over the existing muddy path. You make that better for everyone. And in this context, the space is mobile network spectrum. It's what our mobile networks run on. And removing those older, slower 3G paths makes it possible to put in more 4G and 5G paths, offering faster and more stable connections that can be shared amongst more users. We've already been through this process back when the 2G networks were switched off back in 2016 at some point in the future. The same will inevitably happen to 4G and 5G networks as they too reach the end of their service life. It is what happens because better standards come along, better technologies are developed. The key thing to do before those Telstra or Optus shutdown dates hit is to check your mobile device and specifically its underlying network access technologies. And look, I know that sounds all kinds of techy and scary, but it's actually a pretty simple process. I should say, if you're a Vodafone customer, this doesn't really apply to you because 3G is no more on Vodafone and hasn't been for months. Though, I guess if your phone has been really quiet and not connecting to data for a while now, that might be a bit of a red flag. The easiest way to check on your phone whether or not you're going to be affected is to send a quick SMS to your underlying carrier. And helpfully, it's the same process across both Telstra and Optus networks. Simply SMS 3, that's the number 3, in digits, just three, to 3498, and you should receive an SMS back indicating what the network identifies your phone as and whether or not you in fact need to take any additional steps. So for example, whilst it's from a much newer phone, not one that's affected by the 3G shutdown at all, here's the message I got doing that check from an iPhone 15 Pro on the Telstra network. Now I've redacted my number here obviously for privacy reasons, but you get the idea. Now, if you do get a text back indicating an issue, then it's time right now to look into getting a new handset. And you might be thinking, oh, great. So I'm on the hook for thousands of dollars. Stuff you, mobile networks of Australia. And what I'd say here is, look, you can spend an awful lot on a new phone if you're so inclined and if your finances permit. But 100%, you do not have to in order to get past this particular 3G hurdle. A simple 20 seconds of checking online with Australia's big two supermarkets finds a number of phones retailing for between $30 to $50 outright, which is not a huge sum of money. Now, these are not fancy units, and many of them may be locked to underlying networks, but it's really not hard. My point here, and we're not advocating just for buying phones off supermarkets, by the way, my point here is it's not hard to find a cheap, basic, essential Android or feature phone these days. Fairly simple process if you just need a replacement. Relatively inexpensive too. There is an issue here, but the answer to the question around whether or not you're going to be able to access emergency services once 3G shuts down is that for most 4G phones and absolutely anything you're likely to have purchased as an actually new device in the past few years, you're going to be perfectly fine and safe and we'll be able to contact Australia's emergency services long after the 3G networks fly off into the great spectrum graveyard in the sky. However, there are, it's true, some very early 4G phones that omitted the capability to make voice calls over 4G networks using an underlying technology called voice over LTE, if you care. They were basically 3G phones for calls and 4G phones for data purposes. And also, just to complicate matters, some phones, for practical safety purposes, allowed for voice over LTE, that's 4G calling, for everyday calls, but went to 3G calling for triple zero calls, basically in the time to make sure that those calls would always get through. And that's where this is a concern, if you've got one of those two types of phones. 
So which phones are we talking about here? Well, I don't have an exhaustive list of them. And I don't even think the carriers necessarily do because, of course, there are phones that people might have imported that those carriers never sold that end up on their networks from time to time as well. But what we're talking about here are phones from the era of the iPhone 6, the Galaxy S7, the original Pixel. We're talking around 2016 or so at the latest for these kinds of phones and, and some earlier phones as well. So again, if your phone is newer than that, you're probably safe. The smart play here, again, is to SMS 323498 from your phone. Because my understanding there is that affected phones should be told, hey, you're an affected phone, you won't be able to dial triple zero after the fact. Under no circumstances should you dial triple zero in order to check that it still works. Don't do it. And I know I'm coming on strong there, but this is actually really important. Emergency services are there for emergencies. And I know it might be tempting to say, well, I'm just making sure that I can make the emergency call if I need to make the emergency call. Sure, but it wastes the time of those services. It means that they're not sending out fireys or police or an ambulance. And you don't want to be the person who's responsible for someone with a critical injury passing away because you had to check whether or not your phone was going to work. And moreover, it's actually a criminal offence to do so. So do not do it. Do the SMS, check that way, contact your carrier if you're further concerned. Look, in all honesty, and I know this might not be all that popular with all of my viewers, I actually think Australia's telco networks are handling the 3G shutdown about as well as they could. Having worked through the shutdown of the 2G network, in some ways they're doing a better job of it making sure there's a decent quantity of easily understood information out there to help consumers. At a technical level, yeah, look, it's absolutely a needed step. And you might think, oh, I don't need 4G or 5G for my mobile phone users. But even if you are only a voice and texting kind of mobile user, the additional capacity, reach and speed of those networks should ensure better telecommunications even just for those applications alone. And that's across the board, that's across the country. It makes things better. It's one of those rising tide boat situations, if you follow me. Now, I do get that for some Australians on limited incomes, even asking for an additional 30 to 50 bucks for a replacement handset in these challenging financial times might be a very big ask. Yes, absolutely, I get that, I do sympathize. It's well worth talking to your telco about what they might be able to do to help out. Optus, for example, has announced a limited rollout of some 20,000 handsets for affected customers suffering financial hardship. And it's not in the telco's interests to lose customers. They want to keep you as a customer. And that means it is in their interests to help you get a handset that will work for you. Now, you're not suddenly going to be gifted some high-end folding phone for nothing. These will still be basic essential kind of phones. But I would say if you are still on one of those 3G only phones, you're probably on a fairly basic essential phone anyway. Even a basic essential 2024 phone is going to seem like it's a rocket ship compared to what you're coming from, I suspect. One final thought here, though. While your old 3G handset might not make calls anymore once the 3G networks drop out, it's still going to be a perfectly viable Wi-Fi device. And as such, it's actually a really smart play, if you can, to make use of it. Use it as a photo frame, play what games are on it, scroll your social media, all that stuff will still work if you've got a home data connection. And if you don't want to use your old phone, if it's a bit worn out, if it's just not going to meet your needs or you just don't want it around, please, please, please do not just throw it in the bin. Don't do that. E-waste is a real problem. And there are services like Mobile Master that can help you just responsibly recycle that phone rather than it ending up in landfill and poisoning the planet. So those are my thoughts on 3G. Now I'm happy to have a conversation with people in the comments below about your concerns or thoughts or reactions to this video. Have at it. Thanks for watching.